Okay, let's take a look at uh, question three. Question three. Uh, so the Skyline Railway SLR a transporting co company has potential investment in property, plant and equipment. In 2020, the company exchanged some of these assets with other companies. So A, SLR traded railway tracks running Calgary, Saskatoon to Winnipeg with competitor. Um, highway real highway high river railway in exchange for the calgary regina winnipeg route slr received 10 million dollars from high river railway because the northern road was shorter aside from these 10 million differentials there are no other significant differences in the amount risk and timing of the future benefits from the two sets of tracks the tracks originally laid down in the late 19th century had a cost of 100 million, cumulative depreciation of 65 million, and a fair value of 100 million. So the Calgary, uh, Regina, Winnipeg uh, tracks were recorded on High River's book at cost of 107 million and the cumulative depreciation 69 million. So the question is asking you record a journal entry for the above transactions on SLR's books. State your reason for the chosen accounting method. So um, this is a non-monetary transaction, right? You do receive some cash, right? But you are exchanging uh, one asset for another. We call this uh, non-monetary transactions, right? Because the non-monetary items is involved uh, in the transaction then the key is you know the question you want to ask yourself is um which method are you going to use because there are two right one is without commercial substance uh, versus with commercial substance, right? So if you remember, uh, during the last time we talked about it, um, you know, how are we gonna make a judgment whether there is or not commercial substance, right? So basically, uh, you know, after the, uh, the exchange, does the, uh, the cash flows, in future cash flows, <clears throat> uh, in terms of timing, uh, risk amount will change, right? The cash flow configurations will that change? If that has a substantial change, that means there is a commercial substance, right? Uh, if you remember the example I gave it to you is, you know, if you exchange a cat for a dog, right? Um, you know, you know, in terms of the, uh, you know, how that amount of work, right? You know, for cat, you leave them alone, right? The take care of themselves. For dog, you have to walk, walk them every day, right? Uh, so that's the, you know, con that's the uh, kind of the, con um, the that's the, um, the con side, right? But also, but the good thing is, you know, the benefit is dogs is try to please you, right? Dogs makes you happy. You know, dogs always try to get your attention, right? Play with you. Uh, but a cat just ignore you, right? They come to you only because they are hungry, right? So, um, sorry, maybe I'm a little bit biased <laughs> in this, yeah. in the two paths. I think I, I like dogs more than cats, okay? So no offense to those who have pet, uh, have a cat at home, okay? They all, cat is also cute and adorable. Um, so, so basically, you know, when you exchange one item for another item, uh, want to evaluate whether the future cash flow configurations changed. In this case, um, the answer is no commercial substance. Okay, no commercial substance. Uh, why? Uh, because there is probably no uh, significant difference in the amount, risk, and timing. Right. So here, there are okay, no other 
significant difference in the amount risk timing of future benefit from the two assets, right? So this information tells me that there is no commercial substance. So if there's no commercial substance, uh, that means no gain or loss, okay? No gain or loss. This is very important, no gain or loss. So then let's do the general entry. So uh, you start with the easy ones, right? You are you gave up on the uh, Calvary, Saskatoon, Winnipeg, this highway, right, this road. You gave up this one, okay? So if you give it up, uh, then I have to say I'm going to credit the old track, right? The old tracks. That's the CSW, right? CSW, Calvary, uh, Saskatoon, Winnipeg. So how much the cost for this? So the C, the C, the old track originally done in late 19th centuries has a cost of 100 million, right? I'm going to credit the tracks for for what? 100 million, right? 100 million. And now you're gonna also also close the cumulative depreciation account. Cumulative depreciation account is 65. So I'm going to debit cumulative depreciation on the old track, right? So that's 65,000, 65 million, right? And uh, because this, so in exchange, the company received the uh, Calgary Regina Winnipeg, CRW, and it's shorter, therefore, the company received the additional cash, right? Debit cash for 10 million. And remember, remember there's no gain or loss, right? Because it's not commercial. When you engage in commercial activities, you have gain or loss. Here is not a commercial substance. So there's no gain or loss account you should do debit or credit, okay? So now the only thing left is, uh, if you add this up, this is a 75,000 debit, but the credit is 100,000. So you need an additional debit. You're going to debit additional, make it balanced, uh, 25,000. So this will be your new track, right? New track. That's going to be CRW, Calgary Regina. Winnipeg. That's my first first question. Okay, that's my first question. Let's take a look at a second. So SLR is trying to expand its business in transporting transportation beyond the trail. So the company traded some trail car, real cars in return for several trucks. On SLR's books, the real, uh, the real cars had a cost of 40 million, cumulative depreciation of 11 million, and a fair value of 7 million. The trucks had a fair value of 6.9 million and were recorded on the seller's books at the cost of 8 million, cumulative depreciation was 5 million. No cash was involved in this exchange, okay? So now, they exchange real cars for trucks, right? So now you can see there may be substantial uh, difference in terms of the timing, amount of risk of the future cash flows, right? In this case, with commercial, Substance with commercial substance. Okay, and now you're gonna recognize potential gain or loss. Okay. Um. So how to recognize the um the ISS you you received, right? That's a big a big question. So here, let's do the same. Let's do the easy part, right? You gave up on the ISS, the real cars. Oh, I'm going to credit, okay? 
I'm going to credit uh, the, what's that? The real cars, right? The real cars. The cost for this, the real cars. What's the cost of the real cars? 14 million, right? 14 million. And also you're gonna close cumulative depreciation real car, right? Real cars. Uh, so that's gonna be 11, okay? 11 million. There's no cash involved, so that you, do, you do not debit cash account, okay? And they're gonna be gain or loss, we don't know for now, uh, but we know that we received the trucks, debit trucks. The question is, how much trucks the cost we should recognize, okay? So the question here is, right, if you remember, in the lecture we talked about this, Whichever you have eyesight received, eyesight received, uh, eyesight you give up, right? Give up. Their fair value, fair value. So remember, we mentioned that whichever fair value, um, it can be reliably measured. That's our starting point, right? We're gonna go with that fair value as a starting point. Uh, so in this case, if both values can be uh, reliably measured, you go with the eyesight give up, right? In this case, there's no cash involved, okay? There's no cash involved. So the, the, this is how we measure it. Okay. The truck we received, we're gonna measure the truck we received with the fair value of the eyesight, the real cost we gave up. Okay, and what is this number? What's this number? Uh, the fair value is seven million. Seven million. We're gonna use seven million here. Okay, so now I have a total uh, eighty million debit. Uh, my credit is 40 million so far, but I need an additional 4 million credit. And that has to be the gain on the exchange. Okay. That's this question. Okay, I hope it makes sense.